Hello everyone and thank you for watching my channel. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. From Hollywood, the Knox Company, worldwide distributors of scientifically compounded pharmaceutical products, presents Stephen Dunn, star of Columbia Pictures in Deadline Mystery. Lucky Larson's the name columnist for over 250 newspapers syndicated all over the world. You know, even a newspaper man's got to eat, although to look at most of us, you'd never know we do. It isn't the fact that we don't make enough money, it's because we never have the time. But I'm different. I'm a guy who takes his time. Right now, there's an awfully big mess cooking on the stove in my little apartment. Who's frying? Lucia. The classy little dame who followed me to Sicily a couple of months ago to kill me because... Well, because she thought I'd kill the guy who thought she loved. Brother, she can kill me with her pizza anytime. Pizza, that savory dish that tastes and smells of old Italy. Garlic, tomatoes, gooey dough and cheese. And, of course, the sauce. Wine ripe and smackable. You want to taste it, Lucky? Oh, you kidding, baby? There. Mm -hmm. Is it all right? Just stick your finger in it, baby. It'll be perfect. Oh, Lucky. I love to cook for you. You like everything I make. Oh, you give it such pretty trimmings. Oh, Lucky, you're sweet. Come here. <laughs> oh, Lucky pizza, it'll burn. Forget it. <laughs> oh. Lucky the doorbell. Forget the doorbell. Mm. Mm. Lucky, you'd better go. I think the doorbell's stuck. Oh, okay. I open the, open the door and then right into a story. There's a kid standing here. The blood running down his face paints out his features. He could be anybody until I hear his voice. Lucky, Mr. Larson, can I come in? Johnny Hines, what a... Of course, kid. Come on in. Thanks, Mr. Larson. What happened, Johnny? You hit a truck? No, I... Look, don't I... try to talk right now. Come on, we'll go wash up. Who is it, Lucky? Oh! The kid's hurt, honey. You want to give me a hand? Oh, well, that's awful. What happened? Who is he, Lucky? friend of mine. kid I used to know. We lived in the same apartment house once. Well, don't just stand there. Get some bandages. Yeah. Get some iodine. Get anything. Lucia's soft touch does more for the kid than all the bandages in the world. What that girl can't do with a band-aid... Johnny's patches even have trimmings. He can talk now. Come on, son. Tell us all about it. Yeah, who beat you up, Johnny, and why? They they beat me up because Mom doesn't want to move. You mean somebody's trying to chase you out of the place where you live now? Yes, sir. Mr. Quinn's been trying to get us out for weeks. Oh, I don't believe it, Johnny. But he has, Mr. Larson. He's done all kinds of things, like like turning off the gas, stopping the water. Well, look, Johnny, that doesn't sound like Quinn. I've known the guy for years. He was the best landlord I ever had. He's different now. He, he's so different that we want to move. Only we can't find any place to go. Doesn't seem possible. He's already chased the people out across the hall, the, the Winstons. They had to go to a trailer camp. And the people next door to us had to move in with relatives. Sound like you're telling the truth, Johnny, but it just doesn't make sense. Mom's sick. We've just got to Quinn's stay. never been like that. Why, I've known him to carry tenants for months without even a cent of rent. What'll we do, Mr. Larson? What happened tonight, Johnny? Well, I told Mr. Quinn that if he didn't leave Mom alone, I was coming to see you. Is that why he beat you up? Oh, no, sir. M Mr. Quinn didn't do it. Who did? I don't know. Some big guy stopped me on the street as I was coming here. He said he'd teach me that this neighborhood wasn't going to be healthy for squealers like me. Right. Just a minute, Johnny. I pick up the phone and dial Quinn's number. I have to wait a few minutes. Hey, you look better with your face washed, kid. Hello, Joe. Lucky Larson. That's funny. Joe Quinn has always been glad to hear from me before. Now he comes through and asks me how I am. Why I don't ever come around. I'm coming around now, Joe. I just wanted to be sure you'd be in. Quinn says he's just going out. You better wait for me, Joe. I'll be there in 15 minutes. But Lucky... The pizza. Ah, uh, keep it hot, baby. I won't be long. And uh, don't change your lipstick while I'm gone, huh? Here is a message of special importance to men and women who suffer from backache. To people who feel nervous and jumpy. 
People who are losing their pep because of restless sleep. People who get up in the morning as tired as when they went to bed. To people who suffer from muscular aches and pains and feel a lot older than their years. If these conditions arise from an accumulation of excess acids due to an non-organic and non-systemic disorder of kidney function, the very first dose of the diuretic formula called Cystex, C-Y-S-T-E-X, usually goes right to work helping nature clear away irritating excess acids and poisons. And this natural action may quickly bring an almost amazing increase in pep, a delightful easing of backache, nervousness, and the handicapping muscular pains. Then you can feel younger and get more fun out of life. Because it may bring such a vast improvement in your physical well-being, you owe it to yourself to try Cystex today. Take exactly as directed on the package. See how fast it works. Your money back is guaranteed unless you're completely satisfied. So get Cystex. C-Y-S-T-E-X from your druggist today. See how much Cystex may help you. And now, back to Lucky Larson and Deadline Mystery. I'm at Quinn's apartment house now. I pull up and park. As I turn the motor off, a, a guy steps out of the shadows and points with a gun. I shove the door handle down. I roll to the street. The shot I expect doesn't come. Instead, the whole building falls on my head. <laughs> slowly, ever so slowly, the lights come back on again. There's a buzz saw going around in my brain, and every one of the teeth takes out a nick as the thing goes round and round. Gradually, the buzz saw turns into a hum, and I... I realize I'm all cramped up and riding in a car. I'm lying on the bottom under under somebody's feet. Yeah, definitely feet. Way off somewhere, I hear voices. When you get to Eagle Point, put them behind the wheel and start the car and jump. Oh, how am I going to be sure I'll be killed? Don't be a sap. There's a drop there at 200 feet. Oh, oh yeah. And I stop the car. Let me out. I got another job. I open my eyes a slit. Oh, it's too dark. Can't make out his mug. The lug grinds his wheel under my ribs. I grit and take it. I got to. Can't fight two guys with two guns. Not with me lying on the floor, anyway. The car starts up again. I'd give up all of Lucia's pizza just to stretch once. But I don't dare. Not yet. The car goes on for miles. reached Eagle Point. The guy leaves his motor running, gets out. He comes around and opens my door. I grab his ankle, give it a twist. He, he dives into the gravel. My luck runs out. I lose my hold. I pull myself over into the driver's seat and grab the wheel. The headlights stab at the cliff edge, not 15 feet away. Through their backwash, I see the mug grabbing for his gun. I don't want it, but I got it. I throw the car in gear, twist the wheel hard, and step on the gas. The cliff jumps right up at me. I say, I'm not going to make it. I slide over in the seat and push the door open and slide out onto air or land. Yeah, yeah, I win that toss. Way down below, I hear a terrible crash. Out of the dark behind me, I hear a curse and a laugh. <laughs> so long, Larson. So long. Ooh, my ankle. I ride back into town on my thumb. Right now, I'm pushing the bell at Joe Quinn's apartment. Joe takes his time coming to the door. Before he opens it, he has to unlock it. Well, that's funny, too. Quinn never used to lock his door. Lucky? It, it is you. Yeah, Joe. Pretty healthy-looking ghost. But but I... Joe, what makes you think you can get by with assaulting tenants? But I, I never... Wait a minute. I'm coming in. Oh, please, Lucky. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie, Joe. I already know about three of your tenants. How you had them beaten up in order to get them out? You've got to believe me, Lucky. I never had anybody beat up. Look... I saw Johnny Hines' face tonight, Joe. He came and told me all about it. And about the Winstons and the people next door. Johnny lied to you, Lucky. Johnny was caught tonight trying to strip a car. He put up a fight and the guy who owned the car kicked his face in. I don't believe it. Okay. 
Then come with me to Mrs. Hines' apartment, and she'll tell you that that's the truth. Mrs. Hines is frightened, petrified, but she sticks to her story. What Mr. Quinn says is true, Mr. Larson. Smells like a mackerel. It was dreadful of Johnny getting himself into trouble and then putting the blame on poor Mr. Quinn. Is Johnny home? I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to him. Well, yes, of course. I'll call him. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Larson. That's right. You were caught stealing parts from cars, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of guys made me do it. Who were they? Well, I don't know. I, I never saw them before. Please, Mr. Larson. Please forgive Johnny for getting you mixed up in this thing. The dive I almost took over the cliff wasn't funny. I, I know. But if you don't report him to the police, I'll promise you he'll go straight. I promise. What are you going to do with a sick woman and her only kid? Okay, but there's still something screwy about this deal. For instance, how does it happen these mugs are waiting for me when I got to Quinn's apartment? I I called them after you left your place and told them how I loused things up. Quit lying, Johnny. If you call them, then you know their name. Well, not exactly. They're called Mike and Red. Where'd you call them? Well, they, they hang out at Harry's place. Of course, kid, you know I'm going to check on that. I do. The barman at Harry's place never heard of Mike and Red. He hasn't had a phone call for him either. Not ever. It proves what I already know, that Johnny Hines is lying for some reason. Well, I'd better go home, have a bath, and think things out. Besides, I'm getting late for the pizza. I open my door and... I smell burnt Italy. I run to the kitchen. Every pan is charcoal crisp. Every burner is on. Lucia's out. She's been mad at me before, but never that mad. Besides, she never gets mad at me for running out. She always knows I run right back. I dial her number... No answer. Something's wrong. I'll try a taxi stand. Hello? Jet a cab over to 350 Park Avenue, will you? Huh? Hello? What? Well, where'd you go, baby? Lucia tells me that Johnny lied about Mr. Quinn. She says that after I left Johnny, called two guys. He called them Red and Mike. Lucia says that Johnny said something to him about lost some things up. Hey, wait a minute, baby. Where'd he call him? He says Johnny called him at Harry's place. Yeah, yeah, okay, baby. Now tell Papa, who's holding a gun at your back? I check the operator. Can you trace that call, honey? She says no. My door rings. It's the cab. I get over to Quinn's apartment. Quick. Lucky. Are you crazy? It's one o'clock. Never mind, Joe. We're going to have words. Lucky, I, I'm a nice guy, but I don't have to stand for this. You got any ideas? Yes, I'm going to throw you out. I beat him to the punch. No. I'll try to be funny, Quinn. I grab his wrist and show him oh, the marine puppy. Me. I... Don't, Lucky. I... I'll talk. That's what you should have done a long time ago. It's not my fault. I, I couldn't help it. Honest, Lucky. That isn't what I want to hear. It's, it's a gang, Lucky. They're moving in on all the apartments in this district. How do they work it? Well, they force the tenants out and demand huge bonuses from people who are desperate for homes. You mean you stand for that? I couldn't help it. They beat me up, too. And they threatened to burn me out. What's your cut? Oh, I haven't taken a cent on us, Lucky. I haven't. Who are they? The only one I know is the contact man. They call him Mike. He was here when you first called me tonight. I see. Yeah, he called someone else and told them to lay for you. Then he went to your place and got Johnny Hines. Go on, add up some more. Mike was in the apartment when we went to talk to Johnny and his mother tonight. That's, that's why they lied. What about Lucia, the girl that was at my place? They got her, too? They went back to get her when you told Johnny that you were going to check his story. I'm ashamed of you, Joe. You should have gone to the police the first time these guys came for you. You know, you're a savage. Well, I'll do anything now, Lucky. Anything. Wait, I'll, I'll call the police right now. Don't touch the phone. Why not? i got to find Lucia first. If I don't, I'll never find her. Yes, but how? You'll go down to headquarters with me, Joe. We'll look at some pictures. Maybe you'll be able to pick out this, uh... This Mike. Yeah, yeah, I'll go. If I can find that guy, I'll make him talk. We start for the door. We get about two feet and Joe yells. Look out, Lucky, look out! As the shot, Quinn goes down. I whirl around, the lights go out. I jump to somewhere else and two more shots hit the air where I'd been. Grab a chair and hurl it towards the door. The guy yells as the chair connects. I run towards the door and fall over my own chair. Oh, Get up, I hear the door slam, hand locked. I know that by the time I find another exit, the guy will be gone. Oh, well. I turn on the light and take a look at Joe Quinn. I call the ambulance. A dark, nasty hole in his shoulder is crying red tears. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and gentlemen, you've heard about Systex for backache, for muscular aches and pains, for nervousness, for loss of pep and sleep, for that tired, worn-out feeling when due to a non-systemic and non-organic disorder of kidney function. But have you tried Systex? That's spelled C-Y-S-T-E-X. Until you do, you can't know how fast it may work to help nature curb your backache and muscular pains, bring you greater pep, allay nervousness, improve your physical well-being. Clinical tests in many cases, even on people up to the advanced age of 80, prove that Systex helps a high percentage of those who give it a fair trial. And because Systex is so successful, it is now one of the accepted medicines in many countries throughout the world. For over 20 years, Systex has brought joyous help to millions of men and women. So surely you'll make no mistake in at least giving Systex a fair trial under the guarantee of money back unless completely satisfied. So get Systex. C-Y-S-T-E-X, from your druggist, and take exactly as directed on the package. See how much Systex may help you. And now back to Lucky Larson and Deadline Mystery. I step down to the Heinz apartment. All I find is a note on the door. It says, gone out of town. No milk, please. Fine, fine. There's no one who can identify the gang's contact man, unless I can find the Winstons or the couple next door. Fat chance of that. I haven't the glimmer of an idea where they are. As for Joe Quinn, he won't be talking for a long, long time. Maybe never. I go back to Joe's apartment just as the meat wagon boys get there, and the cops. My old friend, Lieutenant Tom Burns, is pushing them around. Hi, Lucky. Was that you who called the station? Yeah, Tom. Yeah, Quinn's got a bad hole in him. Yeah, I know. Who did it? I don't know. Somebody took a shot at him from the door. Threw some lead at me, too. Put out the lights. I couldn't see who he was. Uh-huh. I don't dare tell Tom what I know. Not yet. If I do, the gang will kill it. Yeah, just as sure as taxes. Hey, Tom, uh, why don't you get a fingerprint guy up here? Already sent for him, Lucky. Oh, are you expecting a call? Uh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, this is Larson. A dirty voice on the other end tells me that if I like that dame of mine, I'd better button my lip. Keep it buttoned. Yeah. Yeah. It's a deal. Only be sure you keep your part of the bargain, pal. Well, that's that, Lucky. Not a print in this room that wasn't made by you or Quinn. Oh, but there's got to be. There's got to. What are you so upset about? Quinn isn't going to die. I still want to find out who did it. Well, Quinn will be able to talk in a few days. Maybe he'll be able to tell you. A few days isn't soon enough. Look here, Lucky. Are you holding out on me? Let me borrow your fingerprint, man, will you, Tom? What for? Don't ask questions. If we find anything, I'll bring it straight to you. No. I'll tell you everything I know, honest, Tom. Sorry, Lucky, that isn't good enough. Tom, you got to trust me. Sorry, Lucky, no. But if I tell you now it'll leak, I'll be scooped. Now, look, Tom, I've helped you out a couple of times. I... Well, okay, go ahead. Thanks, Tom. The fingerprint man and I get into his car. When we're down the road a couple of blocks, I say, Drive to Eagle Point, son. We're going to get some prints off the wheel of a car about 200 feet down. Okay, Lucky, we've matched the prints. Good, good, Tom. I know you would. They belong to a hood who's done at least a dozen rats. Who is it? Uh-uh, no. Not until you come across, Lucky. Okay, if that's the only way. I'm afraid it is. Well, look, I'm uh, trying to run down a story on a gang that's trying to promote a home renting racket. Hey, isn't that a new one? uh uh-uh. Just an old one with a new twist. The shakedown racket. These are the guys who shot Joe Quinn, Tom. They also beat up young Johnny Hyde. Then they kidnapped him and his mother, along with a friend of mine. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Eh, because they killed a whole bunch if they think I've talked. Well, come on, let's go get him. Tom, look, i got to handle this alone. I've got to find this guy and make him tell me who's at the top. You can understand. I've got to use my own methods. Methods that, well, you can't use. No time to bring the guy into headquarters and make him sweat. So, come on, Tom, let me know who belongs to these prints, huh? Yeah, well, Lucky, you're always asking me to break the rules. I... Oh, go ahead. The prince came off of Frankie rules. Fra- Frankie? Mm-hmm. Okay, Tom, thanks. I'll be seeing you. Hey, wait a minute. How are you going to find him? I know guys will sing for a sawbuck. This song's worth a century. I drop into an all-night pillory, pay a nickel for a phone booth. I'm calling a stool. Hiya, Squint. Lucky Larson. Hey, you uh, squint. I got a hundred bucks that says you don't know where I can find Frankie Rolls. The guy sniffs a couple of times, gives me an address. Well, what do you know? 
You don't mean it. <laughs> you know, Squint, I'll go broke if I keep on losing bets like that. I'll put the money in the mail after I've seen Frankie. So uh, don't give him a tip. The address Squint gave me is a pretty nifty neighborhood. Too nifty for the Frankie Rolls I used to know. Looks like this new racket is really paying off. I find the right window and slip my knife under the catch. Easy now, Lucky. Easy. My pencil flash pokes around the room. It looks empty and safe. I give the window another shove. Wow! I didn't count on an alarm. It's too late to back out now. Anyway, who wants to? I climb in, scurry across the room. I get back at the door just as somebody throws it open. The lights go on. All right, you. Come out from behind that door. Huh? And don't try any tricks. I can see every move you make in the mirror. I step out, right into a guy with a gun. Well, surprise. This isn't Frankie Rose. It's a lawyer by the name of Lamson Holiday. I've interviewed him at least a dozen times. Now, hiya, Counselor. Lawson, the columnist. I know you. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, breaking into my house? Trying to steal some papers from one of my cases? I'm wondering if Squint gave me the runaround on this tip. Holiday's a respected mouthpiece, more or less, even if he does defend crooks. Well, speak up, Lawson. I listen to the burglar alarm. I figure I can't get in any worse. Well, I'll tell you, Counselor, I'm looking for a crook by the name of Frankie Rolls. You... You expect to find him here? Yeah, that's what the boys in the back room tell me. Just a minute, let me turn this thing off. <laughs> you, uh... You get around, Lawson. Then he is here. Sure. Just step through that door. I'll take you up. Holiday prods me with his gun. We go up some stairs. Come on out, Frankie. We've got company. A door opens down the hall. A, a silhouette steps out, framed by the light and back. Its shape is the same as the guy who came at me this evening out of the shadows with a gun. Who is it, Holiday? Well, he didn't exactly say he was a friend of yours. Uh, lucky lot. Unlock the guest room, Frankie. That's the right place for a guest, isn't it? Yeah. Lots of guests use this room. You always have a Yale spring lock on your guest room? Come on, on Snoop. Put your on in yeah. there. I step past Frankie. Turn. It's an old Marine trick. I grab his arm, yank him into the room, and slam the door. The Yale lock snaps. Hey, let go of my arm. Break him my arm. How'd you guess it, stinker? Oh. All right, where's your gun? I got a gun. Now, let go. Not in a million years. Well, if you come out, I'll make a deal with you. I don't believe in Santa Claus. You don't come out, I'll shoot the lock off. That's okay with me. I'm holding Frankie against the door. I'll give you three seconds. Hey, don't shoot, boss. The last says it's true. I pull Frankie back as two shots come through. <laughs> You're a lousy shot, Holiday. You missed. Hey, let me loose, Lucky. Let me loose. You don't want me to shove you back in his line of fire. You better talk fast, Stinker. I tell you, I don't know anything. Where's I... the girl and the others? I don't know. The rat's beginning to squeak, Holiday. He'll make a swell witness at your trial. <laughs> You'll have to do better than that, Counselor. Okay, Holiday. Shoot. Brother, are you lousy? Don't think that's all the bullets I've got. I'm loading up again. I measure the distance of Frankie's jaw and swing it. Oh. Frankie sighs and takes a nap. You better hurry with that reloading, Holiday. I'm coming out. Drop it, Counselor. I can beat a shell to the chamber. One second and I'll let you have it. What? What's that? Haven't you ever heard of a doorbell? What? Who could be the answer to your burglar alarm, Holiday. Right now, I'd say your yard is lousy with cops. Cops? Yeah, yeah. You're in kind of a spot, brother. What do you mean? What are you going to do, Holiday? You've either got to go and answer that bell, or the cops will break down the door. Yeah? Well, I've got another choice. Do you mean... Do you mean taking a part of me, sure, but the house is surrounded, Holiday. They'll get you for murder. Open up! We're coming in! Too bad, Holiday. A respected lawyer like you should have had more respect for the law. Open up! Open up! Your bartending days are over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Holiday, don't be a fool. Drop that gun. I had time to get one bullet in the chamber. You can't get it. Yeah, yeah. One bullet's enough. Go back into the guest room, take out the keys out of Frankie's pocket, and unlock the closet door. <laughs> the cheer falls out into my arms. Quickly, I take out the gag. <laughs> there you go, baby. Ah, you still think I'm sweet? Oh, go ahead, Lucky. Go ahead and prove it. Where's Johnny and his mother, baby? In there. They're all right. Good, good. I untie Lucia's hands and feet. She can't cook pizza without hands. All right, where are you? It's the police. Beyond a minute, Tom. Got a little uh, unfinished business. Oh, Lucky. 
Lucky, lucky. It's all right, baby. Well, I guess we'd better go out and face him, huh? Oh, it's you, Lucky. Yeah. Yeah, ain't I the little cut-up, though? What I want to know is who shot Lamson Holliday and why. Now, that's easy, Tom. He shot himself. Yeah? What for? His rent racket went up too fast. He knew he was going to be uh, evicted. Column for today, Sunday, August the 10th, 1947. Deadline by Lucky Larson. Say, uh, have you a little racket in your home? Whom are you paying off right now? Do you know a guy who knows a guy who knows where Aunt Minnie can get an apartment if she marries a veteran? buys $25 worth of furniture for 500 bucks. I know one who'll even furnish the veteran. How about that racket little Jimmy's got when he makes your boyfriend give him a nickel to get him out of the parlor? <laughs> you can stop little Jimmy's racket by patting his pants and uh, leading him out the front door by his ear. You can stop all the other rackets, too, if you'll just call a cop. A cop's got the best protection racket there is, and all it costs you is taxes. You know, little rackets turn into big rackets. And big rackets turn into war. So uh, be smart. Call a cop while they're still small. Huh? You know, at one time, one lonely little cop could have stopped Hitler. Yeah. That's the... Here is a vitally important message to those who suffer from recurring attacks of bronchial asthma. Most people who suffer from the coughing and struggle to breathe, who can't sleep at night and thus lose strength and energy, have had these recurring attacks a long time. They've tried a lot of things, and still they cough, wheeze, and struggle to breathe. Naturally, they become skeptical and think nothing will help them. But I firmly believe there is hope for even the most pessimistic, because I have seen letters from all over the world, from grateful men and women, telling how thankful they were that they got up enough courage to try Mendaco. That's spelled M-E-N-D-A-C-O. And I've seen a large number of clinical reports which convince me that Mendaco has been a blessing to sufferers from recurring attacks of bronchial asthma. There are certain scientific reasons why Mendaco works the way it does. And the producers of this great medicine are so confident it will help most sufferers from recurring attacks of bronchial asthma that they say, get Mendaco from your druggist and take exactly as directed on the package. If you're not completely satisfied, your money back is guaranteed immediately. For coughing, recurring attacks of bronchial asthma, get Mendaco, M-E-N-D-A-C-O. Ask your druggist for Mendaco today. Listen next week at the same time when the Knox Company, worldwide distributors of Cystex, the modern kidney diuretic, and Mendaco for recurring attacks of bronchial asthma presents another exciting adventure of Lucky Larson starring Stephen Dunn through arrangements with Columbia Pictures, producers of Down to Earth. Deadline Mystery is directed by Dave Titus and written by Fred Howard. Today's episode was based on an original story by Robert Neffer. Included in today's cast were June Whitley as Lucia, Sam Edwards as Johnny Hines, Jack Crucian as Frankie Rolls, John Frank as Joe Quinn, and Byron Kane as Lieutenant Tom Burns. Original music was composed and played by Len Salvo. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to actual places or people, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Frank Hemingway speaking. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.